Welcome to World Lit. I'm Mr. Herzog, and Miss Sheehan is with me virtually as we're recording from a remote, remote location, undisclosed. We're in hiding. We're in hiding. You can't find us anywhere, even though I'm at a B&B that you are well aware of. Anyways, uh, so yeah, not hiding very well. I'm doing a terrible job at hiding if I'm telling you that. But anyways, what we're doing here is this is a part of uh, Penn Matters Endeavor to continue to provide uh, activities that kind of expound upon what you've learned so far this semester. And so this semester, we've looked at the Mediterranean, the Northern Continental Europe. We're kind of in the middle of that unit. And what Ms. Sheen and I wanted to do was to give you some activities that expound upon, that are creative, maybe are even a way to tackle some of the boredom some of you may be feeling stuck at home. And this gives some real creative activities that will help reinforce some of the things we have studied, but also allows you to have some fun with it. And I think, Ms. Sheehan, this activity that we're going to talk about now, for those of you that are in any way artistic, and there are a lot of ways people could be artistic with this, not oh, just yeah. in their traditional ways. I think this is going to be a fantastic activity. Do you want to introduce it to them? Yeah, sure. So we are going to be looking at um, developing a setting. So, you know, the stories that we read uh, would be empty if they didn't have characters. Um, they need to be fleshed out, including locations that help the story come to life and find characters and their values. Um, for this activity, we're going to ask you guys to recreate one of the settings that we've listed in the Google Doc that's posted up in Google Classroom. Um, some stories have multiple settings, so you can choose one specific setting from one specific story that you guys want to re recreate. So what we're asking you guys to do is choose one specific setting and recreate it to bring it to life. Um, you're going to be reviewing the details of the story that you choose, either by rereading the stories or by reviewing um, an online refresher, which we have links for um, in the Google Doc. And then you're going to recreate one of the settings of the story through one of the following options. You can do it digitally, um, meaning like using uh, Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop or any of those means. You can do it traditional, you know, traditional art with pencil, pen, painting, watercolors, canvas, stuff like that. Um, you could do it with Legos. How much fun would that be? Um, you could do it on a Minecraft program, um, any of those online building programs. Uh, you could make a physical diorama. Um, so maybe that looks like using toothpicks and glue or Q-tips or modeling clay and really uh, building that structure. Um, you could do it in a collage format. I personally love collaging. I actually have done it quite a bit over this um, uh, surprise break, and it's something that I love to do. Um, or you could do it with clay. So we have a few different, you know, 3D, a few different digital, and a few different um, traditional methods you can go about creating this. And I, can I jump? And can I well, can I jump in here, uh, Miss Sheehan? Yeah, sure. I think. Uh, so this is our list. If you have an idea that you want to do that's not listed here, do it. Like if oh, you yeah. want to recreate it uh, through origami, go for it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so like don't be limited to this uh, medium if you have another way that you want to recreate it. Um, and so we're open to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then there's cartography. We forgot about that yes. one too. Yes, so this one that's kind of hopped down to the next page, cartography. Um, so that would be making a map of the character. Um, certain settings lend themselves better to map developments than others, and we'll talk about that with some of the examples. But this can be a really great choice if you wanted to really flesh out um, maybe a, a path that a certain character has taken over a fur, like a far distance. Miss um, Sheehan, I think about when I when I hear this is we aren't just talking about like a dot here and dot here and showing the path. I think of like the J.R. Tolkien illustrated maps. Like oh, yes. many of you have read like fantasy novels with maps. Those are the mm -hmm. types of maps I'm thinking of when we talk about this. Yes, we're not talking about you know like a treasure map. X marks the spot with the little dashes that lead from point A to point B. We're talking about um, an illustrative, artistically 
developed map um, just for further clarification so once you have completed your um, setting illustration you're going to take a picture um, or multiple depending on you know the size of it um, you're going to put it in the google doc uh, under exploring the worlds of northern continental europe literature um, and then offer an explanation in paragraph form of how your project represents the setting or alternatively you could take a video of your creation and explain um, how the setting illustrates the story and you can upload that to google drive or youtube and share the link in the same area the um exploring the worlds of northern continental europe literature yeah i think so different... go, ahead. Oh, go ahead no, no go, go ahead. ahead i was just going to talk about the different settings that we have oh go ahead we have um les Miser... Mi... Mm, sorry <laughs> les miserables <Yeah>. france <laughs> Kind of what we're living in right now, but go ahead. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, miserable. yeah, let miserable. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is Paris, Paris, France during 1815. Um, you could be doing Bishop Muriel's home. You could be doing Fantine's factory. Um, there's so many different settings in there. Really pull any of them. Um, you could do the walls, Spain. So the wall is set during the Spanish Civil War between 1836 and 1839, or sorry, 1936 and 1939, my bad. Um, so we have some pretty vivid sensory descriptors there that offer a very uh, vivid setting for the jail cell that they are in. That one can be done quite, uh, quite vividly. Um, and then we have the Snow Queen's Land. So obviously fictitious setting based around the scenery Hans Christian Andersen was familiar with, which is Denmark. Um, Kay goes on quite a disappearance journey and then Gerda kind of tries to follow him through the woods. So this would be a great opportunity to develop a really cool map. Um, and then our last one is Cinderella's land. So like the Snow Queen, Cinderella is based off of a real life land, yet it is fictitious itself. So it's based off of Germany, but it has a lot of magical elements in it as well. Um, so some of your illustrations might involve castles, um, Cinderella's home she grew up in, you know, where she had to sleep in a fireplace to stay warm. Um, or even in Cinderella's mother's grave with the beautiful tree that embodies her soul and the, the bird that is the fairy godmother. So, so those are the settings we have chosen. Notice that there is not, however, um, one for adults. And that's because we did that one in class. So we didn't want to make this redundant in any way. We wanted to give you guys an opportunity to flex your imaginary muscles a little bit and um, play around with some other settings besides a doll's house. So we had removed that one from this. Yeah, so again, the idea is to expand in, on what you've done in class and build upon it. So as Sheen said, we want to try and avoid redundancy here, but also give you a chance to be a little bit more creative than you could have been in class. So I think this mm -hmm. is a... Um, I think these are uh, this is a good activity, and we'll probably have at least one other activity dealing with either northern kind of Europe or Mediterranean coming down the pike. But I think that's about it. Yeah. That's about it, Miss Sheehan. Yeah, I think so. And if at any point you have questions, email me scott.hertzog@pemetter.net or message us through a mind, and we'll get that as yep. well. Yep. All right. I believe that's about it. Take care. Bye, guys.